Worship team, don't you appreciate those guys? Every single one of them, just so you know, is a volunteer, no paid staff on our worship team. Uh, guys like Mike in the back who hates recognition, uh, puts hours in a week, gets here like 7 a.m. and during, during the school year, even earlier, these guys work on their craft all week long. We just appreciate you guys so, so very much. Thank you for showing us what heaven is like. It's good yeah, stuff, it's isn't good it? Stuff. Yep. Hey, we're going to jump into it today. Lauren and I have on our heart uh, just to share the story and get everybody caught up to uh, how this amazing thing called Hill City Church uh, has begun. And I'm going to set my timer, boom, right now, so we know Ooh. we're under the gun. Because when we tell stories, man, we can get into it. So I feel like this is story time with Pastor Zach and Lauren. It today. really is. So please pretend like you're in our living room right now. Yeah. Welcome. We have a giant living room with a lot of seats in it. We don't have anything Hope to you give you, but there's stuff out there if you want something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. That's yeah. a kitchen? Uh, yeah, okay, that's okay, our we're kitchen. all done. Okay. Uh, so today we really want to get caught up. What we're going to be doing is uh, we're launching a new website here in a couple of days. And as we do so, uh, we're videoing our story. And we've also videoed Pastor Jim's story of how the land came into his possession and the video uh, of the vision of the land. And really what our desire is, is if you've been here for one day or one year or since the beginning, that we all get on the same playing field for what our story is, who we are, where we're headed. And uh, our, our heart today is just to share with you about the faithfulness of God. It is very simple. God has been so faithful to this point, mm -hmm. but go ahead and nudge your neighbor and tell him he's only just begun. Go ahead and tell him that. You can open up to Philippians chapter 1 and Isaiah 40. Isaiah chapter 40, okay? Yeah, really, we just want to get you caught up to speed. Everybody asks, well, so how did Hill City come about? And I think it's important for our family, for us to know that it wasn't just like a cool idea or because it's like the hip thing to do. Like, oh, we're just gonna go plant a church. Like, it's awesome. We're just gonna go do that. Like, this like was a God. And stuff. Yeah, this was a God breathed, a supernatural yeah. thing that took place over time to get us to this place. And, and we're excited to share a lot of those details with you. Um, it's gonna be yeah. good. So, Isaiah chapter 40. Bella. Why don't you read? Yes, I sir. I open the Bible for you, sweetie. All right, this is a good scripture right here. We'll explain it a little bit later. So Isaiah 40, verse 3. It says, A voice cries in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. In Isaiah, or, uh, Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6, uh, this is another big scripture for us. It says, and I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Come, somebody give me an amen on that one, right? Awesome. Let's pray as we get into this today. God, we just thank you so much for uh, the story that you've been weaving. And Lord, I, I thank you that we could share that story with clarity. God, thank you that my wife is back after ankle surgery and recovery. Uh, I just honor her in prayer and in front of everybody today. She's such a hard worker. And uh, for the last six weeks, I felt like I missed a whole lot uh, because she wasn't by my side. But God, I thank you that she's back. And Lord, as we share the word today, uh, Lord, I pray that you give us boldness and clarity. And uh, Lord, I thank you as the Steelers enter, in, enter training camp uh, that they, they win the Super Bowl twice this year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're the gonna, Lord hears our prayers. Yes, he does. He definitely oh, does. Yeah. So we're going to synopsize this whole story because there are so many details that we can share with you. And the details are immense. But what we want to do is we want to focus on the God moments. We want you to see the faithfulness of God throughout this entire story. Because I want you to know one simple thing. It was the hand of God that got us to where we are. And it's the hand of God that will take us to Come the next on. season. Right. It's his faithfulness. It's his yep. word. It's his, it's his spirit. It's a supernatural hand of God that has gotten us here and will take us into the next season. That's right. Season, right. So uh, Lauren and I both, we had uh, opposing calls to ministry, if you will. Uh, mine, I, I always knew that I was called to ministry, uh, even from like a really young age. My aunt one time asked me when I was five years old, what I'd be doing with my life whenever I was this age. And, and I told her that I was going to be a pastor. And she looked at me and she said, uh, you probably, you can't get married. And I said, well, uh, because I was, or I told her I was going to be a priest. And she said, you can't be married. And, uh, and I said, well, I'll just change religions. Right. And so, because I wanted a family and I wanted to be a pastor. If you would ask me that, that's what I wanted deep down. But I had a lot of shame in my life. 
1996, I was in a church service where, you know, that worship that we just experienced, uh, we were in passionate worship setting like that. And I looked around and I saw people believe what they were singing for the first time in my life. And it greatly impacted me. And that night, uh, I went up to the front to be prayed for, to, to receive Jesus, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and to go into ministry. Like, I knew that my life was dedicated to ministry. I was only in about maybe going into seventh grade at the time. Uh, but I slowly began to fall away from God. And in 2002... The call came back when I'm in the middle of a meeting in our football uh, in, in, at Geneva College. My coach was actually preaching uh, from the book of Matthew and led me back to the Lord in a group setting. And God spoke to my heart and said, Zach, I'll still have you. I said, Lord, I don't even know the Bible. And he says, you don't even worry about that. I'll teach you. And uh, I, I, wanted, I set that on the shelf. And I dedicated my life to ministry and, and began a process. Now, Lauren and I met a couple months after that, right, for the first time. Yeah, that's right. And I grew up in an amazing Christian home. I was taught, you know, the word of God. And I, in high school, I kind of veered away from that. Uh, we went through a little bit of a rocky time, and I kind of veered away from that a little bit. Mm -hmm. And actually, Angela Madden and my parents have a lot to do with why I came back to Jesus. Um, Angie, uh, we've been friends since, since we were infants. I don't know life without Angie in it. And she pretty much talked my parents into sending me down to a revival where they knew that they kind of forced me, if you want a cell phone, you're going. It doesn't really matter. You're going to this. And so um, really, um, the way I explained it was like God kissed my soul down there at, uh, in Brownsville and changed my life. And I knew that I needed to live for him. It was one week before college started. And I called my parents and I said, I can't go to Slippery Rock. I know I'm, I'm, I'm not going to make the best of decisions. I just know it. we got to find me a Christian school. Yeah. And they went to Geneva one day. There was a rainbow over it. We just knew we had the peace of God knowing that I was supposed to go there. And so a year later is when Zach and I met. Yep. And you, you went to the football uh, meeting, right? Yep. And yep. Got, pretty much got saved. Yep. I, and uh, a couple We're months after that. Yes. Yeah, a couple months after that is when we met. And when, and when we met, I hid from her that I felt called to ministry because I didn't necessarily know what that meant. And I didn't know how she'd react. And I thought she was hot. Okay. So I was like, <laughs> not going to scare her too quick. Although I did share with her that I was going to marry her. <laughs> Although and you that, did that, tell me three like, days that after. That would freak her out, married. right? <laughs> like, yeah, of course, right? So I'm hiding from her that I feel this call of ministry because I didn't know how she'd respond. But I felt it deep down. And I didn't necessarily know how to process it, right? And so uh, we began to uh, look for a church together, and we jumped back to that church where I was prayed for. And uh, immediately we started serving, and I began to feel that call to ministry just get stronger and stronger on the inside. And one day I looked at Lauren and I just said, hey, uh, I, I, I got to talk to you. I, I just kind of feel, I just kind of feel called to ministry. Yeah, and I wish that I could say, oh my gosh, me too. That's great. Let's go. <laughs> But I didn't because those of you that maybe your reflex is a little bit of fear, I was like, um, actually, I think you just love Jesus a whole lot and maybe just not now. You yeah. know what I mean? I was a little bit fearful, I think, at that moment. You really wanted a husband who would provide for you. And I was 19. I was 18. Yeah. I didn't know what ministry meant. I'm like, that sounds like the scariest thing ever. Yeah. You know, I'm not perfect. Like, I thought you had to be perfect to go into ministry or be used by God, which is a complete lie. Right. But, so and it anyways. wasn't until we dated all through college and we served together. You know, a call to ministry is a call to serve. And that's what we realized. We began to do anything that we could for Pastor scrubbing Larry Scrubbing the Bettencourt, floors, scrubbing the toilets. Anything that you could think of anything that nobody wants of. to do, we did those things for yeah. Pastor Larry. And, and you know, I, I wanted to, I thought a call to ministry was a call to serve Pastor Larry. And so what I did is I just did everything I could to help him. And he is my spiritual father. He's a man who's still in my life. He brings me correction. He puts his arm around me, uh, one of the best men that I've ever met in my life. But I was able, honored to serve him uh, for a long period of time. And uh, as we began to, you know, go through college together and have all these amazing experiences together and serving in youth ministry, uh, I was offered a job in Colorado. And when I was offered that job in Colorado, we flew out. We were engaged, obviously stayed in separate rooms and all that stuff because we were staying with a pastoral yeah, family. Yeah, be smart. And, Hello. You know, be smart. Yeah, come on, Colorado, that would be dreamy. But, you know, hey. So... I had to honor this woman, and, and you know, yeah, we did. So, uh, so when we went to Colorado, there was this ministry that we wanted to go to, and we had just like, man, we, we have to see this place. We have to go because God was just doing so much there. And we're in the middle of worship at this place, and, and I remember uh, the words that God, I remember the song, your name is a strong and mighty tower. You remember oh, that yeah, oldie? Is it oldie one. but goodie, baby? Yeah. So uh, I remember that song being played, and in the moment, I felt God's presence speak to me. And he said to me so directly, I haven't called you here. I've called you to Pittsburgh because there's nothing like this there. 
And I look over at Lauren and I'm like, hey, I think, and then she was just going like this and she had this posture like God was speaking to her. So I sit on the shelf, I'm like, hey, I'm not gonna, not gonna say anything to her right now. Afterward, I pulled her aside, I said, hey, was God speaking to you at all during worship? And I said, yes, because you know, you just get this knowing sometimes, that's the Holy Spirit. When, when you feel like God's speaking to you, you just get this understanding and you just know that it's God. And I said, yeah, Zach, I felt like God said, and this is crazy, like don't judge me for this, I'm just throwing this out there. I feel like God said, that he's called us back to Pittsburgh because there's nothing like this there. And he said, what did you even say? You were like, oh Same my. exact words, we're same like, exact time. What? We're going back to Pittsburgh, baby. We were like, <laughs> is this really happening? This was day one of the interview. Yeah, like, so then we had to pretend the whole time. For like four days. <laughs> we're like, um... Yeah, like, but anyway, we know this isn't right, but we're gonna eat your food and do all of, and, no. and go snowboarding with you. Listen, That's the way it before felt. Before we knew how healthy conver- how to have healthy conversations, we would have just sat down and said, "Listen, we really feel we'll like God spoke it. to us, <laughs> and it's not here." <laughs> but we, we yep. felt really bad, and so, anyways, God called so us back to Pittsburgh. God called us back to Pittsburgh, and I accepted a job working for Pastor Larry. Yes. I, I was just wanted to serve him in any way, shape, or form that I possibly yep. could. And I taught special ed. Yep. Right? And you were a swim teacher. Yeah, the only position they had open was for a special ed school. So I was like, all right, good. It was to, spe- to teach 250 special needs kids how to swim in a pool. And I didn't know all the swimming, you know, swimming things. And they had lots of accidents. That's, so we would be swimming. The pool was and, drained like every other day. Oh, it that was is great. For sure. So it was a very humbling experience, but I just knew that that's what we were supposed to do, right? Yeah. And, and we, we just ta- began to serve in college ministry. Yep. Uh, there was an opportunity. Um, the, the church we were at had a, had a thriving college ministry, and then it just kind of dissipated. And we had this big vision on the inside of it, and I was just kind of praying, and the Lord gave us an opportunity to lead that ministry. And we began to, I mean, we began to just see revival. Uh, what had maybe five people around a table, and they were talking about doing like a small group out of it, uh, became several hundred people coming, and, and we led thousands of people to Christ through the yes. years. It was absolute revival. It was a revival, but I feel like we didn't even know. Sometimes you don't even know what you're a part of until yeah. you're out of it, and you get to look back and see Wow, because we're so focused on what's next in our culture and our generation of what's around the corner, what's in front of me, yeah. that we miss out on this very moment. What is God speaking right now? What is he doing right now? Yeah. So I feel like we, we just wanted more. You know, yep. we just wanted God And to I remember more. one specific girl who came in and she was drunk yep. and she was an addict. She said, I tried. She got off the bus at Slippery Rock. She got we on the bus at Slippery Rock, right? Yep. Accidentally, Yep. by the way. Bust her down. She rode the bus. I mean, she was drunk. She came to church. She gave her life to Jesus, and she went back home. She got rid of all of her drugs. She poured her alcohol down the drain. She became clean ever since, and then she went into full-time ministry right after. And that's like, why that we was do what we, we experienced. That's Come on, it. that that's is what why. It's all about. We in those days we began to become addicted to life change. It was yes. like, come on, we need to see more life change. We need to see more life change, more life change. And that's why we do what we do here at Hill City. Like we don't exist to have like a glorified country club where we come in and be like, oh, that song was nice. We want to see God move in your yes. life like a crazy way where yes. you're like, I know God, I know yes. who I am, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna come know on. Jesus. And I'm going to walk out my purpose. Come on. Right? That's right. We, want you to, we want you not only to know who Jesus is, but we want you to walk in a divine destiny. And that's why we do what we do every Sunday. Yeah. And even there were moments in ministry where, and Zach, and I really feel like this is even a part of what God's called yeah. us to do is we would ask for people that felt called to ministry to come forward and the power of laying on of the hands. And we would see a lot of young adults come forward and just give it all up to Jesus and just go after ministry and just yeah. and run with their calls. I mean, remember it was like- Remember that one time? You remember was, that one time? Yes. 40 or 50 young oh, adults yeah. came up to front? Yes. How many do you think are in ministry right now? I don't even know, but it was it amazing. Blew our minds. And that's what we want to see. 95%. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. 95% of them are in full-time ministry right now. Yes. God moved like crazy. And yes. my pastor came in and he saw everything that God was doing in the 20-something ministry. And he said, Zach, there were some major issues taking place in the youth ministry. And he said, I've asked myself every night if I would have just allowed you to lead the youth ministry, what would, what would it look like right now? He said, Zach, will you go in there? And will you, will you do what you've done in this ministry and that one? And I said, absolutely. Because my prayer was just to turn to gold anything that pastor asked me to do. Um, I just wanted to serve and, and do whatever. And, and so when we were, when we, were um, we began to lead youth ministry and we started to see revival happen again. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was kind of like the kids were there and they were like, eh. But do you remember you the know? kids that like before we got in, they were like, these are the kids, like these four kids, 
like, you know, they're in timeout, kind we've of like. We've suspended them. We've suspended if them. If they're in, they have, they have uh, assigned seating. Like, they have assigned seating. Like, there's really no hope. Like, they're kind of like the Alice cast, you know, like, just keep them kind of in timeout. Yeah. You can't tell like, us to do that. No, I'm the strong willed child. Don't tell me to do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, just don't tell me what to do, period. You have to make it but my then we idea. Started, I'm just kidding. Then we started service. We're like, man, these kids are really disruptive. Yeah. But then, and it started getting frustrated, but the Lord began yep. to deal with our heart. Like, tell them they're leaders. So while they're disrupting everybody, showing them who knows what on their phone, I'm like, little Johnny's getting exposed to something over here, probably. You know, that's how bad it was. I, I would interrupt service during worship and I'd be like, hey, Luke, you know what? You're a leader, man. Look at all the people following you. God's giving you leadership. What you do with it is up to you. He'd be like, oh, okay, like that. And he would disrupt service. I'd be like, man, you're such a leader. Look at all the people who follow you. God's giving you leadership. What you do with it is up to you. God is giving you leadership. When we were about to stop saying that because it wasn't working, <laughs> we're hosting this retreat. And uh, we called people up. We prayed for people to, to be called into ministry. And these, the three stooges come up to the front, right? And I, I pick up the microphone. I was like, I said, those who are called into ministry come up to the front. And they're like this. We're praying for people individually. The power of God is in the room. He's healing people. We're giving prophetic word after prophetic word, setting people free. We get to them. I didn't even need to pray for them because the power of God hit them so hard. They're like, they're out. Like, oh, uh, they look like soggy Three cereal. Three teenage boys, like puddles. The of, tough teenage yeah, boys who are all about their image. The power of God hit them. And when we prayed for them, I got down on the floor and prayed for them. They came up different kids. They went back into their school yes. and they, they started a Bible study in their school and they eventually served that school. They had, uh, you know, see you at the flag and there was a kid who had committed suicide in the school and they said, let's go. And uh, Sarah was a part of this who's, who's on staff with us or her uh, fiance is on staff with us. We did see you at the, at, at, the, at the poll, but we did a memorial service for them. 350 students showed up. We shared the gospel with them on, on a high school campus the mom and dad who, who didn't know Jesus, who had just lost their son the day before, came. And I got to hug and pray for them and minister to them and share the love of God with them in the midst of their struggle, in the midst of their, their issues. We began to see revival sweep again. It was crazy. It was awesome. And really, that fires me up because that's why we do what we do right now. We don't yeah. just... We don't come together on Sundays just to have a nice time together, although it's great. But we want to see, we want to see God's glory revealed in this city. We want to see him impact yeah. people that are addicted to alcohol, That's right. people without hope, people that have no future, no hope. They don't feel like they're going anywhere. We want to see God impact them, change them, and go after, go after that. Like, that's why we do what we do. That's right. Ah, but then, guess it. what happened? The well started to dry up. We get into this season where Rod and Jill began to pray over us yeah, and we, we go to, to camp. camp. That's right. And uh, Rod and Jill prayed over us and prophesied. And the Bible says in the book of Timothy, uh, Paul told Timothy, uh, he said, stir up the good gift that was given to you through the laying on of hands and prophecy. And that's so true. A the gift good gifts do stir up they in do. that moment. Yeah. yeah. And, and so the gift that was imparted to us, they prophesied over us that we would be a spiritual mother and father to many. And, when that and there happens, was something that took place inside of us. Something shifted, something dropped, something changed. Yes. But yes. with that awesome change also came a change of values yeah. because we became who we were. And we started to not fit in that organization anymore. And we started to feel it. And so start, like, honestly, happening? just yeah. started to feel unfulfilled. You know? Yeah. It was like, it was like, there was, it was starting to drive. We couldn't, we couldn't, we didn't know because we didn't have all the wisdom in the world. Now we look and look back and hindsight is always twenty twenty. but we started to realize that God was shifting us again and there was something else that God was calling us to. Yeah. And so, um, so we had all of these amazing times with God. And, and that's when Pastor John, when, whenever he called you, yeah. or he, he pulled you aside. He pulled me aside and he said, Zach, you're ready. And I'm like, what? And he said, you are ready to lead a church. He said, if you feel called in your heart to step out and lead a church, I'm 100% behind you. And I looked at him and I held my cards close. I'm going to be real with you. Because when your boss says to you, hey, do you want to check out this organization? You're not like, oh, yeah, tremendously open. Let me go take an interview over here. Because sometimes it might be testing your heart. I knew that's not what he was doing, but I held my cards close still. And, and I, I, I left that meeting, though. And I felt excited and reinvigorated for the first time in probably a year and a half mm -hmm. because ministry had become mundane for us. We had outworked ourselves and my heart just wasn't in the, in the right place that it was before because we had worked so much. And when he said that to me, there was something that was jumping on the inside of me for the first time. And Lauren and I were at the end of a 21 day fast and I yeah. came home and I said to you, Laura, 
I think Pastor John just kind of gave me permission to like to go dream a little bit. She's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, uh, that like we could like maybe like look for other jobs outside it outside of Cranberry. And I was like, what? <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> I'm the brakes, he's the gas. That's kind of how we work a little bit. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, we're comfortable here. Like, this is perfect. Like, we've got a hope and a future. Like, all is good. Why, why shake things up right now? <laughs> things are looking pretty good. Yeah. And he, you know what? He looked at me with like a gentle and kind heart and he said, Laura, I don't need, I'm not going to try to convince you because if I try to convince you and I pull you away from here and it's not God's, and it's not his voice and it's not what he wants and I'm trying to convince you, you're going to be angry and bitter and upset because, you know, I pulled you. I just want God to speak to you. Like he, you know, just allow him to speak to you. And I said, I, I can let him do that. Like I can handle that part. And it was the last, my fast was over. We're, we're good. In one hour. Are you guys okay? Our fast was, my fast was over in yeah. one hour. It was 11 o'clock. Okay, it was 11 o'clock before my fast ended and Judah had just been dedicated. I had a big chocolate cake sitting, sitting right in front Anybody of me. Everybody else, like else stress eat? it we was do. like temptation is staring yeah. you right in the face. What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. You know, and it was the end of my fast and the chocolate cake was sitting right there. And I said, Lord, you know, you're, you're so good. Your grace is so overflowing. If I just ate a little piece of cake, like I know you'll, you'll still speak. But I felt, this, I felt this conviction, this like the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is telling you something, you better listen up, right? I've got this feeling of like, don't do it. And I'm like, okay. So I pushed the cake away. This didn't mean that God was going to move because I did this. It just means that my ears were open to him. And I said, God, I want to hear your voice over every other voice and every fear that I have right now. Because sometimes we need to hear his voice when the fears speak louder than anything else, That's right? That's right. That's right. And I said, I won't be moved by fear like I have before. I'm going to trust you. So when I went upstairs, I went to bed. It was midnight. And I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I felt like I just sat up out of bed. And guys, whenever I tell you that through this time, as we unpack this, the Lord had to reveal himself in such a strong and powerful way because it wasn't going to be easy. Yeah. Okay? So I sat up in bed at 3 a.m. And I knew That's the good. Lord was going to speak to me. I go to my closet. And I was just like, okay, God, like I'm listening. I feel like you want to speak to me. What is it? And I heard Isaiah 40, verse 3 through 5. And if you guys can pull that up, that would be awesome. What was My really interesting is the week before I had taught on this scripture contextually within our youth ministry, and but I, I felt there. like God was speaking to my heart this scripture about my personal life as well, which he does. And so I didn't share that with you. Which is crazy, but yes. we'll, get to, we'll get to the details. So the Lord showed me this scripture. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And I read the rest and I go, oh, snap. I'm like, okay, well, what does that mean? You know, what does that mean, God? And I said, because we always do, right? We always question if it's God, if he's speaking to us. Are you, okay, I heard a scripture, but is that really you, God? And that's really yeah. what I said out loud. I said, God, is that really you? And then I heard Matthew, I think it was 1426. I should have written it down today. And I flipped over and it was when Jesus was talking to Peter you guys remember that story? He was talking to Peter, and I opened it up, and it was highlighted in my Bible. It is I. Do not be afraid. And it said, he said, it said, come. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I literally said that out loud at 3 in the morning. Oh, my gosh. Are you serious? What's going on? What's going on? And I started weeping because yep. I just knew God he, he's so good that he gives you exactly what you need when That's you need right. it. That's he right. knew that fear would be my nemesis. Yeah. So he told me to look in Peter where he was talking to Peter about fear. Yeah. He said, it is I, do not be afraid, come. And wow. so I just started yelling, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, he's telling us to step out of the boat. He's telling us to step out of the boat. And that's literally all I remember about that night. I just went to bed and I was crying and just saying, God, whatever it is, I trust you. I don't know what it is, but I trust you. Wow, yeah. And, and then, the next morning, Lauren is trying to download everything that God did in her heart in those two hours, right? And my friend from Colorado, his name's Marcus, keeps on calling me over and over. He's a super persistent fellow. So what I learned is to hit reject, text him, go back to bed. And he call again. I picked up the phone. I'm like, Marcus, it's like four o'clock in the morning. Go back to bed. And he's like, put Lauren on the phone. I need to pray for you. 
And so he began to pray out the things that we were just talking about as we were in the room, as he were in the room right next to us. He began to say, Zach, Lauren, you need to know that your best relationships are not behind you, but they're in front of you, that you're entering into a new season. And in this new season, it's gonna be challenging, but God's grace is gonna be bigger than any challenge you'll ever, you'll ever come against. And he began to say, Lauren, your teaching gift is gonna get fully utilized in this next season. Yep. Glory to God. That's I right. mean, for real? For real. We, I, I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, the Lord will confirm his word. He yeah. knows our fears and our insecurities and he will confirm it. That's the power of when you feel like you need to call somebody and pray for somebody, yeah. do it. So good. So you would think after this moment that it just walk, we just walked into happy land, right? Like right. it's just like happy land. Like you walked into your destiny and it was written out in front of you like, oh. Nope. But that, that is definitely it. not it because every, every time you see God use someone in the Bible, you see them walk through a wilderness period. And you might be in your wilderness period, but let me tell you, breakthrough is coming. Yeah. Okay? But let me hear, let, hear me out, okay? David, he ran from Saul in the wilderness. Moses experienced, Joshua experienced wilderness. Jesus experienced the wilderness before he went into his personal ministry. Paul was in the wilderness. He was in Arabia for three years. So if you're in a wilderness, you're in great company. Yeah. You're in great company. You're with great leaders. The great wilderness leaders. is not, sometimes we think it's negative. It's bad. It's, it's horrible. The wilderness yeah. is a point where you can do nothing else except for trust God. That's it. It was, you know, that's, you have nothing else to do except for trust That is so him. good because that's God, it. we had taught the faithfulness of God for years. Yep. But God God took us to a place where we had to experience it firsthand. And we, we did. And we did. <laughs> yeah, we definitely did. <laughs> so after that point, I feel like then we just started seeking, that, like going around in the country. Where are we going? So we, we, going? we resigned from our position. Yep. And my pastor, again, validated le senior leadership in us. But we didn't really feel that at the time. No. We didn't think, you know, we were like, ready. Or I was like, that's nice of you, but you have to say that because that's your job. You yeah, know? like maybe in like 10 years. I think maybe I can get a job on the executive team at a very big church and make decent money to pay our bills and stuff like that and learn all the lessons that I need in order to then lead a church maybe five years from now, right? But can we tell you that every single place that we went, Oklahoma, Alabama, Houston, Kansas, oh, Jesus, no. <laughs> Florida. Florida, every single place that we went, yeah. it was like God was redirecting our heart and, and, and telling us, this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. It's all right. This is what I want you and to do. Every single place, except for the one where my good friend was about to hire me because we're like buddies. Yeah. Uh, they all validated senior leadership. They were like, we would spend the weekend with them and want to like, go on staff. And they said, doing what, are you, what are you doing? We're like, what do you mean? We're, what are we doing? We want to work at your church. You know, it'd be guy, a great opportunity. The guy said, why do you want to work at our church? The guy I was replacing. And, and I, I was like, well, because I, have, I need a lot of training. And he looked at me directly, and I'll never forget this. Luke said to me, um, he said, do you really need training or do you just need confidence? And I was like, oh, so good. He's my age. I mean, come on. I'm like, I received that word from like a 60-year-old, but like, come on, you're my age. Come on. I said, you tell me what you think I should be doing. I got a little bit angry on the inside. And he said to me, he said to me, you need to be leading a church. So we're in the middle of a worship service. And once again, I see Lauren hearing from God, that same posture like we were in Colorado. Yeah. And God spoke to your heart in their, in, in their service. Yeah, and I looked around at the church and it was a diverse church. It looked like the kingdom of heaven. That's what it looked like. Yeah. Yeah. And in worship, I said, I was, just, I was just worshiping God, and, and I felt like the Lord said again, and I know this sounds crazy, guys, but we're just telling you the story because it is crazy because it's God's hand. And I felt like he said, I haven't called you to be a part of this. I've called you to create this. And I just started weeping. We go back to the, the back of the, the room. This was, a, this was a large church in Houston, and we sit down with the pastor and his wife, and, and, I, and I believe this word is for someone here today, too, and um, and, and Pastor Allen said, you know, you can have this job, Zach. This, this job is yours. And, and, you know, at first it's like, oh, wow. And he said, but you know what? You know what I really feel in my spirit? That you weren't called to be a part of this. You're called to create this. And I just start weeping like a baby. And Zach's and like, And I'm like, oh, oh come on. Don't it weep together. at a job interview. You know? Please. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm like, you have no idea. I'm like, 
okay. I, you know, I was just like, yeah, this is exactly Yeah, then you dropped it on him. Yeah, you told and him. And I dropped it on him. And Miss Joy pulled, pulled, took my hands and pulled me aside. She said, Lauren, this is for you. And I believe this is someone in here today. Do you yeah. need... Do you need training or you just need the confidence, really? Do you just need the confidence? But she pulled me in and she said, Lauren, God is going to give you a vision. She said, he's going to give you a dream. He's going to plant it in your heart. She said, it's just like conception. I was like, where are you going with this, Miss Joy? You know, like, ah. Uh. And she said, it starts out like a tiny seed, just like at conception. That baby is five weeks old and that heart starts beating. She said, God is going to give you a dream and it's going to start out small and that heart is going to beat. Yeah. And she started kind of clapping her hands, just on beat. She said, and that baby, she said, that baby will start to grow. She said, you're not going to know what that baby is going to become. You're not going to know exactly what that baby is going to look like, what color of hair, what color of eyes. She said, but all you need to do, and I'm, and I'm believing this over you today, all you need to do is keep your heart yeah. in sync with God. And that baby will become everything yeah. that, it, that it is to be. And is destined to be. Keep your heart in sync with his, Lauren. You'll get ahead of him. You'll get behind him. You'll get off sync. You'll get, you know, your heart will come off rhythm. rhythm. Keep your heart in sync with his. And you cannot go wrong. And that has stuck with us. And so we continued, right? Yep. We even tried for a job in Ohio, the senior leadership. All the while working three jobs yes. to make ends meet. And then Nate texted you. Yeah, and so we are deep in the process of, of the only one that we felt decently comfortable with, and it was a retail area in Columbus, okay? It was just like Robinson, but I had grown up Almost in the area. exactly like Robinson. I had grown up in the area, so sometimes when you grow up in the area, you become familiar with it, and you don't see everything that an area can be, or sometimes if you have leaders on your team, you can become familiar with them and then, and then not dream about their futures as a, as a leader, and I refuse to, I refuse to live life that way. Uh, and, and, and we went to this place in Columbus and the Lord, I, I was going on my last interview. I had to fly in for my last interview and, uh, uh, Nate sent me a text and he said, Zach, don't leave Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh needs you. He said, uh, he said, let's, let's start a church. And I looked at my phone and I threw it down on the bed because if I threw it down on the ground, it would have broken. I didn't have enough money to fix it. <laughs> So I threw it down on the bed and I said, God, I got angry. I said, God, this is what I want. I don't want Kansas. I don't want Florida. I don't want Texas. I don't want Oklahoma. I hate Houston. I can't stand Houston. I said, Lord, we want, we want Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Give us Pittsburgh. Let's go. Because I'm a Yenzer. I love Pittsburgh. And for years, I was so frustrated that people like Mike Rabich had had to leave Pittsburgh because it wasn't a church that could, that could house their vision and empower them to, ch to dream and to chase. And that's what we feel in our heart as, we're pa as we pastor. You're not here to support our vision. We're here to support your vision. There's dreams and gold on the inside of you, and our job is to pull that, pull that out. Oh, yes. my goodness. And that was born in that moment. Yes. I said, Lord, we just want to raise up a generation of dreamers in Pittsburgh, people who are going to change the trajectory of the city. Yes. Let's go. Yes. Yes. Do you know what God said to me? God yep. said to me, Zach, you've been listening to everybody else's voice, but I want to speak to you. Plain as day in my heart. And I knew that when I went to bed that night that God was going to give me a vivid dream. And so he gave me a vivid dream that I was in that church that I was going to interview for. And I was sharing the same scriptures and the same message that we're sharing right now. And the people looked at me as if they were comatose and didn't get it. And I got off the stage and there were grasses that had grown up between them so they couldn't connect. There were trees that had grown down so they couldn't see vision. And there were weeds that had grown up so they couldn't, they were immobilized. And I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know if I was to hack all the weeds away or if, if this was just a, a message, but I came to realize that those people weren't meant to hear the message that we have in, my, in our hearts. We realized that, right? And so after Crazy. that, we were like, oh my gosh, we, we felt this calling to senior leadership. Yeah. And I remember we went to a coffee shop and we're getting to the end here. We're wrapping up, I promise. Well, we sat at a coffee shop mm -hmm. and I had thought about every season of my life, how my reflex was fear. And how whenever Zach would tell me something, I would just go back to fear. And I sat at the coffee shop and I looked at you and I said, Zach, 
I said, let's do it. I believe that you were created for that. I remember looking in your eyes and saying, yeah. you are called to bring back sons and daughters to the right standing with God. Yeah. One by one, soul by soul, heart by heart, broken by broken, let's do this. One heart, one soul, one heartbeat at a time, let's go. Yeah. And then we knew, it's like we knew, it's like the Lord just dropped in our spirits that we were called and we were called to Pittsburgh. And I remember the next day even, David and Trina Falk had randomly called us like, what are you guys doing? Where are you going? And we're like, well, we could share like our story if you want to. And they came to our house and we literally just told them everything that we told you. We told Angie and Nate, you, and people started surrounding us. The we presence of God filled the kitchen table. Yes. And we knew. We knew, like we knew. this is it. This, this is, is marked it. by God. Like we felt him like confirm it. And we started praying. Like we really felt Robinson Moon. It was like stirring up inside of us. We believe that God, sometimes God allows you to fall in love with another. Like we fell in love with this place, this retail place. But if we didn't see that, we were like, God, why did we miss it? Were we... But if we didn't see that place and fall in love with that place, don't question God. He knows we fell in love with that place so our eyes were open to what we had right here. Right he showed us. us what we had here. He said, this is it and showed us. He made it so clear. Rod prophesied over me in the middle of a church service and he calls me out and he points in the back and he said, Zach, and I was hiding. I was just going to church. Nobody knew me and he said, Zach, he said, the Lord wants you to know Joshua, when he commanded the son to stand still, he was praying over the wrong thing, but God still honored his faith. And he said, just as, as you might have been praying around the wrong area, God saw your faith and he's going to honor it in this next season. I'm like, oh, you didn't even know that I was driving around Columbus in a circle and like we were praying about what God had for us, but we were praying for you the whole time. We were praying yes. for this house the whole time. Yes. Crazy good. So it's crazy. So. so when we decided to start the church, we start all these interest socials. And my friend Jeff, who's a part of this and church, gives me a call. People started and he said, us. there's this amazing man that I, I, I want you to meet. He's said, much I feel older. I like it's a God thing. Yeah. He's much older, but I think that you should meet. He has land. And I, I pause. Lauren, a year ago, a, a year before this, this conversation, crazy. pointed to a hill and said, that's where I see the glory of the Lord being revealed. A church needs like to be a there. A church needs to be on that hill right there. Right like there. That's an amazing spot. Yeah. And so I saw Lauren's finger go like this whenever he said, he has land. And I was like, where is it? And he said, on a hill. And I'm like, near Settlers Ridge. And he said, near Settlers Ridge. Nobody knew at this time where Nobody we were Nobody knew. Yeah, it's crazy. Nobody knew anything about it. Nobody knew. And I said, yeah, I, I, I want to meet him. So we walk in to meet Pastor Jim at Grace and Glory. At this little chapel on Leedsdale. Mm -hmm. And we walk in with the church. There was probably about 10 people there, maybe, 15, or so, 15 25, people. Who cares? It doesn't even matter. All I know is I felt the presence of God like I had it yep. for a long time. And I knew this is a God thing. I, God, I don't even know what you're doing right now, but I know. And Pastor Jim was preaching on being a city on a hill. And we had known that we were calling the church Hill City Church. And nobody had known that. This was just a conversation between me and Zach. Hill City Church. Actually, no, a few of us had known that, mm -hmm. I think, at that time. Like, uh, the, the small group of us that were meeting that our hearts were the same. Anyways, um, we knew we were calling it Hill City Church. He was preaching on City on a Hill. Pastor Jim, after service, uh, Jeff introduced us, and we went downstairs with him. I had been studying Joshua and Moses the whole year before that. I'll make a way where there is no way. Pastor Jim sits down with us, shares his story with us for about three hours. He said he, had, he has land on a hill and he wants to see the glory of God revealed. Now, if you think about the scripture in Isaiah, that the glory of the Lord was gonna be revealed, my heart was leaping in this moment because yeah, I just yeah. knew God is in this, something is going on, we knew it. Yeah. And Pastor Jim looked at Zach and he said, Zach, I don't know what God's gonna do, but maybe you're my, maybe you're my Joshua. Maybe you're my Joshua. I've had this land for 20 years and I've never been able to build a church yeah. on this hill, but maybe you're my Joshua. It's like we all knew right then. So this, when you, when you have a relationship like this, you don't just jump in. We, we set, sit prophecies on the shelf. We sit words that people have on the shelf and we watch them come to pass. We can't force them to come to pass. When you have a dream, you sit it on the shelf and allow God to interpret that dream over time, okay? That's just yeah, wisdom. That's an, that and so important. with Pastor Jim, we went through a due diligence process with him. Now I'm gonna tell you a crazy story. You ready for it? Okay, everything's crazy so far. This is, this is like kind of wild. So we were praying vi like fervently to make sure this was, this was the plan of God. And one day, Pastor Jim unfortunately had pneumonia and was in the hospital and he couldn't preach at his church. 
So he called me. He said, Zach, will you please preach for me this, this Sunday? I said, yes, sir. So uh, I had a dream that night that there was a woman who was an authority figure. I believed an authority figure in Pastor Jim's life. She had a lab coat on. She had a, a bunch of books behind her. And she had a, a, an executive desk. And Pastor Jim was on the other side of the desk. She looked dis- discouraged. And then he looked discouraged. So I texted our prayer team, Judy and George Hannon. Angela will remember this. And I said, hey, guys, I believe that there's a woman who's a doctor and is also an authority figure in Pastor Jim's life who uh, we need to pray for right now. Can you pray for her? So our team just started praying for her, okay? That week when I went into church, that same woman from my dream was right in the hallway to greet me, okay? She introduced herself. She said, hi, I'm Pastor Jim's older sister, Irene. And I said, Irene, what do you do for a living? I was like testing it. She said, well, I started the nursing program at Cedarville University. I was the the dean of nurses for a very long time. I said, so you were in a hospital? And she said, yeah. I said, so you wore a lab coat? She's like, well, of course. (laughs) I'm like, (laughs) okie (laughs) dokie. We were praying for her. She said, I've come to watch you and interview you today. And so she listened to my sermon. She's taking notes the whole time. She comes up to me and she just in a matter of fact way, she looks at me and she said, this is God, we're gonna get this done. So we knew from that moment that God was converging that vision. Yeah. Family's messy sometimes and sometimes it's hard, but God has converged that vision yeah. and, uh, and we were able to move forward with it. So we had a call, we had a response, we had a wilderness and we began to experience a breakthrough. We began to experience a and breakthrough. And that was really before the church even started, guys. Yeah. Like that's who God is. your wilderness like even in the natural when you can't see things like all work out sometimes like just know that in the supernatural like there's so much more going on and there's so much more for you spiritually like God can give you dreams he can give you visions he can speak to you like there's nothing special about us at all like we were broken teenagers, you know, who just found God. Like, there was nothing special. It's just we wanted more, right. you know? You know, and, and I think about this, and I just want to exhort everybody in this church today with one thing. It was the hand of God that got us to this place, and I vow before you that it's going to be the hand of God that will take us into the next season. We have huge vision. We share that vision all the time. We, we have a vision of seeing this church impact a region but more so a nation. I believe revival is gonna be sweeping through Pittsburgh and we get to be an awesome part of it. I believe that we need to be a part of taking back the arts, of training up and raising the level of minority minority entrepreneurs in this city. Uh, I see a healing and transformation center taking place within within our church, out of our church to make sure pastors, people are actually living their healthiest life ever, right? Free counseling and, and moving forward in that. I, th- see, our vision isn't about a building. No. It, it's, it, it's, it's about a city. It's about a people who need to be reached. And we see this highway in the wilderness that We're is being it. paved right now. But it's the hand of God. See, I remember this scripture in the book of Psalms that actually says that the Israelites limited the Holy One of Israel. That's the King James Version. Limited the Holy One of Israel because they failed to remember what he had done for them. Guys, remember the hand of God. As we move forward together, remember the hand of God. It was the hand of God that got us here, and it's the hand of God that will move us forward. Philippians 1.6 says, I'm confident of this one thing, that he who's begun a good work in you will carry it out to completion in the day of Christ Jesus. We are... Thanks. So we lean on God together, and we trust God to bring this vision to completion. And this isn't our story.
scripture that he's given us has never been about a building. It will never be about a building. The picture that he, that he gave, remember the very first ghost paper stoker that you, that you had? It was well, about people. We saw, this is complicated, but I have to keep it short. We saw that every time I prayed about this church, I would see a white man holding the hands of a black woman in the church, and we would pray for our nation. And I kept on asking the Lord, what, what is that? What is that? And uh, one of our friends who's a minority sent us this uh, understanding of, 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 social, uh, of social hierarchy. And at the top is white man, white woman, black man, black woman. And I realized that it was a white man holding the hands of the, the, the top to the lowest, that the church was going to be the one to fulfill the, the unity within the body of Christ. It's going to happen here. And essentially, Dr. King's vision started in the church. It's going to end in the church. It's going to get carried out through the church. And I know that we're just a huge part of that. I do. I do. Yes. And so Lauren and I have a very specific call for you, just as we do every week. What is God speaking to you today? What is God speaking to you? So to the left today, I'm going to have our prayer team up in just a moment. Lauren will invite our prayer team up. If you have something where God's speaking to you, where God is giving you a message, or God is downloading something to you, or you have a vision that God needs to bring to completion, or whatever God's speaking to you, I'm just, we're, we'll dismiss in a minute. And uh, our prayer team members, you could just come straight up and receive prayer from those guys. We want to join with you. And on the right side over here, Lauren and I are going to be up here. And if you feel called to enter into full-time ministry, this is a grace that we have in our life to pray for people who make de de dedications to enter into full-time ministry. doesn't mean that you're going to go into full-time ministry tomorrow, but you know that you're called to full-time ministry. We want to pray over you. Lauren and I are going to be right up here. Our worship team is going to play for a little bit, and Lauren is gonna, Lauren's going to lead us in dismissal. You're free to go. You're free to stay. You do what you want, okay? We're, we're, not the, we're not the USSR right now, right? Go ahead, babe. You got something Why don't you guys stand up with me? Like Zach said, if you feel called into full-time ministry, and listen, even if you're Thank not, you. You. this isn't just about being called into full-time ministry. This is about understanding who we are as sons and daughters of God and taking it outside of this building into our workplace, into our homes. So it's not just about that, but if you have needs, we'll invite our prayer team down. Why don't you guys come on down, the prayer team. Jade and Dane, if you guys can come down. Kayla, everybody, whoever else. And those of you that feel called into full-time ministry, even if you've been prayed over before, it's okay. We can pray over you again. It won't hurt. We want you to just line up straight across this way here because we're going to pray over you. Those that you feel, you feel called into full-time, five-fold ministry, we believe that something is going to be imparted to your hearts today in a special way. Those of the rest of you, let's just pray. If, if you can, just close your eyes and bow your heads with me. God, I just thank you for every individual in this place. Lord, I thank you that we are never too far or too dirty or too sinful to escape your love. Yeah. God, I pray that even as I'm speaking right now, those people that have never fully made a commitment to Christ, Lord, those, of, those that have never said, I want to give my life over to Christ, I want to live for him, and I don't want to look back. God, I pray that you just begin to work in their hearts right now, that they know that it's you, and they know that it's them. God, I pray that it's them. All the Bible says that we have to do is confess with our mouth and believe in our hearts, and we will be saved. If that's you and you want to ask Jesus into your heart, all you need to do even in this moment is say, Jesus. Yeah. I invite you into every part of my heart. God, I can't do this life alone. I need you in every space of my life. If that's you, if you know you need Jesus, after we dismiss, I want you to come forward and ask a prayer partner to pray with you. But God, right now, let's just lift up our hands. God, we just thank, thank you, Father. Jesus. Thank you. God, I thank you that we're not here on accident or by mistake or this is just something that came about, Lord. But I thank you, God, that you will reveal your glory to our church, to our cities, to our families, to the lost, to the broken, God. We just say, have your way, God. We didn't start this church just to build a club of people to come together and have a good time, God. We came and we built this church, God, that you would move and you would be seen and you would do mighty miracles, yes, God. God. So we thank you for that, God. We pray that you unleash that. Yes, God, reveal your glory in a big way. 
In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed. Those of you that want to pick up your kids, if you want to stick around and worship for just a few more minutes, our worship team is going to go straight into worship. You can stick around. You can come up from prepare, or we'll see you next week. We love you guys. We believe in you. Those that are sticking around for worship.